aesthetically, the Fuji X-Pro2 isn't. But what it lacks in design, it makes up for in image quality and technology, delivering a powerful and complex set of features and functions. As always with Fuji, this is a camera made to make photographers happy. APS-C sensor, interchangeable lenses, manual controls, uncompressed RAW, and in addition to the LCD, there are both optical and electronic viewfinders. It's been four years since the X-Pro1, and a lot has changed. Fuji highlights better performance and image quality from a new sensor and processor, along with a weather-resistant body and two SD card slots. What has not changed are Fuji's photography sensibilities. That sensibility starts with the controls. There is no mode dial, simply select what you want to control. Use the lens's aperture ring to dial in the f-stop, aperture priority, or the top dial for shutter speed, shutter priority. Leave them on A for automatic. With both on A, it's the equivalent to program mode, P, as indicated on the display, or set both for full manual. There's an EV dial for exposure adjustments and a nearly hidden ISO dial. Pull the shutter speed dial's collar up to set the ISO, again, with an auto setting if you prefer. When shutter, aperture, and ISO are manually set, the EV display turns into a meter. There's a button to select the metering mode, photometry if you speak Fuji. If it's not working, face detect, which overrides metering, is turned on. I like this direct and physical approach. There's not one exposure setting that requires a trip to the menus. Although, you will need the shooting setting menu to configure the auto ISO, with default and maximum settings, as well as a minimum shutter speed. ISO ranges from 200 to 12.8, with L, or 100, with a reduced dynamic range, and H, 256 or 512, for special situations, when it's better to have a low-quality image than no image at all. Only one H setting on the dial means you have to pre-select which you want from the menu, which is not next to the other ISO setting, but hidden as a button customization. I found both a little grainy, but perfectly acceptable. It's easy to overlook two more unmarked dials, the front and rear command dials, which spin and can sometimes be pushed to confirm. The front dial can access intermediate shutter speeds. For example, when the shutter speed dials at 1 500th, the front dial can select from 320 to 800. The rear dial does the same for aperture, if the lens has no aperture dial. It's also used for menu selection. If you're wondering what the C on the EV dial represents, in program aperture and shutter priority modes, by default, EV can be adjusted 3 up or down as displayed on screen left. In C, the range is 5 up and down, but set by the front dial. I prefer full manual over EV, so likely won't use this. Also easy to overlook is the tiny menu navigation joystick, also used to select focus area, and that's truly useful. Fuji has been working on their focus technology, and there's a PDF booklet with all the details. I put a download link below that provides samples and explains when each is best used. On the front, select Single, Continuous, or Manual. In Manual, press the rear dial for Expanded View Focus Assist, turn the dial for alternate magnifications. To have Expanded View display as soon as you turn the focus ring, use the AFMF menu and turn Focus Check on. There's a helpful on-screen distance guide. Watch the blue bar indicating the depth of field expand as I close the iris. Press and hold the rear dial for two alternate focus assist modes, digital split image, and peaking. By default, the button at the bottom of the control dial selects the focus area, single, zone, or wide, which turns into tracking in continuous mode. Use the joystick to move the area. 
There's an option to use 77 points on a 7x11 grid or 273 points on a 13x21 grid. I'm using 273, but if you have a valid reason to use 77, please comment. It's worth noting that the X-Pro2 reverts to 77 in zone and wide tracking modes. Focus may be fast, but it can be indecisive and a little noisy on both of these lenses. And for every time focus amazed me, like here following this fast-flying turn on a fishing trip, it disappointed me when it just wouldn't focus. For example, I can manually focus these roses, but no combination of settings will autofocus. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. Face and eye detect provides very accurate focus. Using the menu, select left, right, or auto. Again, it can be unreliable. Back to basics. The X-Pro2 is a sturdy, industrial piece of quality kit. Feels solid in every way. It's made in Japan, if that's important to you. And there are old school connectors for flash and shutter release. It's a good size. The thumb grip ledge on the back compensates for the smaller front grip. It weighs just under 500 grams. It's slightly larger than smaller. I found it comfortable with mostly well-positioned controls. I prefer to have the menu control buttons a little higher up. Fuji also sent over two lenses, a 35mm f1.4 prime, equivalent to 50mm, and a 50 to 140 constant f2.8 stabilized zoom. It's big and heavy enough to come with its own tripod mount. The 50 to 140 zoom action is all internal, and its movement is smooth enough to use for video. There is a quality to Fuji images that I can't fully explain. Yes, they're clear. Detailed with rich and vibrant but not oversaturated colors. A nice balance of dynamic range, although admittedly some of these are processed from RAW to reveal detail I didn't find in the JPEG. But then, my vocabulary fails me to describe the visceral pleasure and attraction I experience while reviewing my images. Or maybe it's just the memory of a terrific meal. The dual optical electronic viewfinder, Fuji calls this the hybrid multi viewfinder, is really cool and quite complicated. It's on the left side, so if you shoot with your right eye, your nose won't smudge the LCD. The optical mode is a rangefinder viewer, so not an SLR, it's not through the lens. There are two switches on the back to select viewfinder, LCD, viewfinder activated by eye sensor, or eye sensor for switching between viewfinder and LCD. Flick the front to the right to switch optical and electronic. The optical display has a shooting information overlay. Use the disc button to switch it off. Nicely, however, a soft shutter press displays the settings even when it is off. Setup, screen setup, disc custom setting can be set independently for optical and electronic. Three pages of options to choose how much or how little info clutter you need. This is also where you enable the horizontal electronic level and the histogram. In optical mode, hold the switch to the right to change the view between wide, 0.36, and tele, 0.6 magnification. The guide frame adjusts for focus here on the 35mm and follows the lens as you zoom on the 50 to 140. Or press the button to see various focal lengths specific to the view size. Still in optical, Flick the switch the other way and a small electronic display appears in the lower right. Well, usually anyway. It's not compatible with zone or wide tracking autofocus modes. Electronic mode provides a preview of the image. It may not be obvious, but if you want the highest display quality for both the EVF and LCD, use setup power management to select high performance. For longer battery life and lower display quality, use economy, which also reduces autofocus speed. One last cool thing. Rotate the camera, and the viewfinder display rotates too. Well, only electronic mode. The LCD doesn't rotate either. I know that there are many passionate photographers on both sides of the optical-electronic viewfinder debate. 
but this provides the best of both worlds. The LCD isn't articulated, which is a bit of a miss in 2016. It's also not touch enabled, also a bit of a miss. White balance can be selected from the Q menu, auto and seven presets, as well as three custom settings and degrees Kelvin. Unfortunately, it's not interactive. Use the image quality menu and you'll be able to see the impact while selecting. The menu also sets degrees Kelvin, captures the custom white balance and fine tunes the look using a 19 by 19 grid along two color axes. These settings are applied only to JPEG files. The left control button opens the film simulation settings. Emulations of Fuji and other film stocks, including negative. There are two mono modes, three if you count sepia. Press right to select from standard and filter settings. The Acros mode is new and for the moment only available on the X-Pro2. It's based on the Acros film stock and has been developed to provide both the fine grain and response curve associated with that film. Also worth noting that the grain aspect increases with the ISO using Acros. Like white balance, these settings apply only to JPEG files. My Fuji reviews seem to always include a black and white section. That says something about the creative impulse that Fuji cameras seem to encourage. And there's just something classic about these images. If you'd like to make your own adjustments, the quick menu has seven step adjustments across controls for highlight and shadow tone, color and sharpness. Advanced filters, accessible at the bottom of the drive menu, are a standard collection of effects. Raw files are not saved in this mode. None of these modes work in video. Not much of a value add for me. Press the top of the control dial to select drive modes. Single, burst, and exposure bracket when raw is on. If you're not shooting raw, ISO, film simulation, white balance, and dynamic range brackets are also available. The high speed burst can take 25 images in 3 seconds before slowing to about 1 per. It takes nearly 30 seconds to save the files. Go to the shooting menu for self timer, 2 and 10 second options. Also on the shooting menu, the intervalometer settings. Interval up to 24 hours between shots, one less than 1000 shots total and start delay. Back to the drive menu for multi exposure. If you're looking for panorama, out of luck. Playback options include extensive raw processing, including film simulations, but not advanced filters. Wi-Fi can connect Fuji's iOS and Android camera remote apps, but also to the Instax printer, my favorite Fuji accessory. The app can provide geotagging info to the camera, download images from the camera, and act as a remote control with basic settings for stills and video. Two SD card slots, focus and burst speed benefit from the processor and sensor upgrade, so I put an SDXC U3 card in slot 1. If you do put two cards in, use Setup, Save Data Setting, Card Slot Setting to select Sequential when card 1 fills up, recording switches to card 2, Backup, all images are recorded to both cards, and Split Raw. Raw files are saved on card 1, JPEG files on 2. Worth noting that movies can only be recorded on 1, never on 2, even in sequential. Baffling. I am liking this improved Fuji menu system. The organization by function, as opposed to the traditional shooting and setup categories, make finding features simple, but not everything is where it should be. While the card save settings are on setup, the seemingly related format command is hidden as a user setting, and I don't know about you, but I don't like being called a user. There are six customizable fun buttons. I like this visual guide. The Q menu provides access to the most used shooting functions and can be customized, and up to seven custom presets can be created and accessed. Although the X-Pro2 can record video, it's kind of an afterthought. It's not that it's not capable or good quality, it's just limited. There's no live HDMI for external recording or monitoring, but there is a micro-sized mic jack. The movie menu has three settings. Mode from 1080 and 720 from 60 down to 24, including PAL rates. Five step audio level, and a setting to use the micro jack for audio or a remote control. 
Without Zebra, it's hard to tell when the scene hits 100%, but using a DSC Cameline, the optimal exposure is slightly overexposed with a usable dynamic range about 20% beyond the broadcast standard, a very contrasty image. These images are graded to a more standard range. The top right fun button starts and stops recording. Maximum record length is 14 minutes 30 seconds. They're standard .mov files with a data rate that tops out at a reasonable 30 megabits. Nearly all the still features work for video with the exception of a few effect modes. The indecisive continuous focus mode sometimes makes for unusable footage. I thought about listing all the video features I'd like to see in the X-Pro3, but I don't really need or want this to be a video camera, just one where you can shoot a few minutes of video in a pinch. That'll do. Every camera has faults and compromises. The X-Pro2 is no exception, but like the X-Pro1 before it, it's destined to become a classic. This kind of image and build quality doesn't age or go out of style.